them. The White House is reportedly finding a way to get banks even more money without having to go through Congress. According to the New York Times, the Obama administration says it can stretch what is left of the $700 billion bailout by converting existing government loans to common stocks. Gee, doesn't that sound handy? It's backdoor nationalization. Here is Republican Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. Um, uh, Congresswoman, we were just talking um, off the air about progressivism, and it is, uh, it is a nasty, nasty idea that started around the turn of the century where it is control of business, it is control of the financial institutions. How would you explain what's going on here? This is, this, this is bad news. It is. The story that is coming out is that the Obama administration wants to take its preferred shares that they have in these banks and convert it to common. And what that means, it's a backdoor way of nationalizing these banks, but it really is a dirty deal for taxpayers. Because what it means is, if you have preferred shares, taxpayers actually get dividends from these banks. Mm -hmm. Once you convert to a common share, the dividends go away. The taxpayer doesn't get the benefit. The other thing is the taxpayer loses its position to receive money back from the bank. So right. that when the banks do well, if you have preferred shares, the taxpayers would be first in line to get paid back. Common shares, you don't. But here's the worst thing about it, Glenn. The common shares have the voting rights. So now the federal government will essentially vote and own those banks. They're not letting some of the... Look, I have friends that, w that were in in the room with the Treasury under George W. Bush and when Paulson walked in and said gang here's the deal you're gonna take this and you're gonna sign this paper and and they said well no no wait a minute here they said you aren't leaving here until you sign this paper this was this was mafia and it was from the Republicans it was mafia tactics now you can't get out now they're not letting some of these banks out of that deal. This was never about anything other than control, was well, it? Well, and that's what the hard thing is to believe. I know in Minnesota, we have a bank, Twin City Federal, that saw the handwriting on the wall, and they said, nuts to this, we don't want this money, we want to give it back to the government, and they began the process of paying it back. I think part of the reason is because once the government nationalizes and owns these banks, then the government will have the right to say, which bank will get more money, which bank won't, and don't you see the injection of politics into all of this? So if banks play the political game right with Uncle Sam, they'll get infusions of capital or it'll be pulled back. It's almost like uh, Julie Andrews in Sound of Music with the marionettes and the little puppets. That's what the Obama administration is doing. They're acting like puppets now with banks and pulling the strings on banks. And banks will have to jump now to the administration's okay. tune. I, 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 I want to go back there. I want to come back after the break. I want to start there because that was the problem initially. And we need to delve into that. America, you need to understand what the game is that's being played. And then how does, how does the average American stop it? Sure. Okay. Well, we were talking about the idea that President Obama and the administration are acting like marionettes yes. with the banks. Okay. And the level of power and control is because the real concern, just like we're seeing at General Motors now, I call it government motors, mm -hmm. we're seeing government now make the decisions based on politics. So now the administration is forcing a car company to create cars. That but they're, a lot of but they're going buy. even further now. They're offering, they're talking about offering, uh, if you just turn in your old junker, they'll give you $5,000 credit to buy one of these new cars that the government is going to be helping design. It, it's supposed to help the environment, but to make that car actually does more damage to the environment than the junker does. It is, it's this massive shell game. And you might be buying a little tiny cardboard car that will probably be a lot less safe yeah. than perhaps the SUV that your teen daughter was driving before. So there's a lot of... Okay. We, don't want, we don't want politicians how, deciding our market. How is the, um, uh, how's the Tea Party? How are they received in Washington, generally speaking, down there? Because I've seen a split even in the Republican Party. The Republican Party, some of them are like, oh, thank goodness the Calvary is here. Others are saying, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, these guys are crazy. They're nut jobs. They're too far to the right, etc., etc. 
What was the reaction? I would say the reaction is probably more on party lines. I think those on the Republican side were very happy to see the Tea Party, and I think on the Democrat side, I think they were afraid, actually, because this was an organic movement. This wasn't something that was created by some master uh, community organizer planner. This happened from the ground up where maybe 16 people would go and meet up, or maybe 5,000 yeah. would meet up, or 300. This was everywhere where it was happening. I, we witnessed two of them. I was out speaking one day and uh, on, on the day of the tea party and we saw two organic meetings just start up on their own yeah. hundreds of people just met I, up I tell you and, and I've told you this before um, you have to um you have to let people know in Washington what's coming their way. People are angry, and it's, it's on the bo on, it is on both the right and the left, it and they've coming. got to start listening to people. Because people want common sense to prevail. They do. And they want to own their own property yeah. in the future. They yeah. don't want Uncle Sam I know. opening. I know. Congresswoman, thank you so much. Thanks, Glenn.